Hi, I'm Jean Schumacher, founder of Simply Plant Based, where I have programs to help you to change your health destiny, including the Pregnancy Advantage, where Dr. Deborah Shapiro, who is an OBGYN, she and I help women to get their bodies pregnant ready or to heal their bodies if they're dealing with infertility issues, as well as the Plant Based Academy, where I provide support, guidance, and resources to switch to a plant based lifestyle. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Nathan Gershfeld and Dr. Renee Thomas of Fasting Escape about their new program. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, both of you, for taking the time to be with me here today. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, Jean. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, just based on your introduction, I also want you know to, to stress to your listeners that uh, Dr. Renee Thomas is actually a a family medicine doctor, and and she does uh, actually deal with some of the issues you were talking about. Right. So hopefully we can get to some questions today, and uh, shed some light onto some some of the medical puzzles that exist in your line of work. Excellent, wonderful. Well, okay. So fasting—that's a word we've been hearing bandied about. So <laughs> let's let's dive in first to that. What what is fasting? Well, fasting, uh, we're going to talk about, you know, anything, anytime you talk about fasting, you're talking about abstention from food, just not eating food. Okay. So you can be fasting from dinner to to breakfast. Okay. Where you're breaking the fast. You can fast from lunch to dinner, uh, but it's not eating the food. What we're actually dealing with the, with fasting escape is therapeutic fasting, where you're actually doing it for a therapeutic purpose. So that me that that definition is the complete abstinence from all food and drink in a period of complete rest. And so we, we that's a more complete definition. There's different types of fasting out there. You might hear intermittent fasting, you might hear modified fasting, juice fasting, these like that. So this is all kind of stems from the main definition of therapeutic fasting. So you can do some modified fasting, like some, you know, doing some juices or some broths, or some people even use the word fasting when they're talking about abstaining from say, you know, meat or fish or things like that on, you know, say Lent, for example, uh, they say oh, I'm fasting from, from meat or I'm fasting from alcohol, but th- that's kind of the, the, the general generic way to use it. But, but really what we're talking about is therapeutic fasting, where we might be fasting people for any number of days in, in sometimes weeks uh, for therapeutic purpose. So here's the million dollar question. Why would you want to do that? It's, it's not a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie because like I'm done fasting. Why would you do that? Yeah, it's not fasting can be a pretty intense and sometimes miserable experience, but people will usually seek out doing a therapeutic water fast because they've exhausted all the other options for actually getting well. So if we take, say, the, the most common, you know, co- common problems in, in, the, in the world today, in the, mo- in the modern world, in the developed world, it's going to be diseases of dietary excess. And what I mean by that are diseases that are caused from eating too much unhealthy foods. So things like high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, different heart related, heart disease related events you've got autoimmune diseases. You can have any number of diseases that are due to eating, to consuming the Western diet or the, the diet of the developed world, which is, you know, foods that, that your audience may know all too well, the you know, meat, fish, fowl, eggs, dairy products, excesses and amounts of oils, salts, sugars, flowers, alcohol, coffee, I can go on. But the idea is that many of these diseases can actually be reversed or even affected uh, positively by, by fasting. Okay. They can be affected by changing your diet as well. Okay. Now, if someone's going to be changing their diet, it's going to be very difficult to do so. Okay. We can admit that we can understand that everybody's human. And we know that, that changing your diet from a Western, you know, uh, processed food diet is going to be very difficult. And so one of the main difficulties is, uh, is actually breaking the cycle, this addictive cycle called the pleasure trap. And in order to do that, food actually has to taste pretty good. So one kind of major benefit we see with fasting is when people are struggling, trying to get back on track or getting that momentum back foods that they need to eat actually don't taste all that good. Whereas if you do a fast, whether it's a week or two, two weeks of fasting, all of a sudden now the taste buds get a break and they get much more sensitive. And so the foods that you're supposed to eat actually start to taste a lot better. So things like steamed broccoli, steamed cauliflower, plain salads without a bunch of oily, you know, salty uh, dressing on there, they start to taste a lot better, which makes facilitating a healthy diet much, much easier. Oh, I have to agree about that. You become (laughs) your taste buds. Whoa. I did a fast not too long ago and I was coming off the water fasting, transitioning to a smoothie 
fast for the day. And I took a little piece of banana before I put it in the blender and I just put it in my mouth and I'm like, I'm like, wow, do bananas always taste this amazing? <laughs> they like, do. <laughs> they, they actually taste this good all the time. It's just that when we're, when we're eating a lot of rich, richer foods, your taste buds adapt to those richer foods. And so the less calorie dense foods actually don't taste as good. So you're, you're actually getting to enjoy the plain whole natural foods a lot better if you give them, a, if you give your taste buds a break. Really true. I thought my brain was going to blow up. I mean, it was like, wow, this is so good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Renee, can, can fasting damage your body in any way? Anything healthy can be taken to an extreme and can be causing damage. People can drink too much water. They can eat too much broccoli. Who knows, right? Any healthy, uh, healthy behavior can be taken to an extreme. However, done properly, medically supervised, fasting is proven over and over to be a safe modality, but it does have certain rules and regulations to ensure that that's, you know, actually going to be the case. And I think what was important that Dr. Gershwald touched on is what fasting is. And the difference is important to delineate from starvation because most people don't know the difference. And the difference really being is that starvation is once you start to use up your non-essential tissue during a state of prolonged fasting. So you've run down on your reserves, you're too low, you've exhausted them, and you start to break down essential tissue in your lean muscle mass. And that's when you become starving. Starving is rarely by choice. But that's the difference physiologically. So we only fast for periods of time that an individual can handle physiologically to make sure that we're not going into the danger zone. And that's where those established protocols come in. They're designed with safety at the forefront, right? You know, a lot of people will come to us and say, I want to do a 30-day fast. But the reality is we can't commit to these timeframes. It's a day-to-day basis of establishing whether it's safe to continue fasting. One of the things that always comes up with fasting and, you know, harming the body, and I I often mention it because we get this question a lot, is about why we don't add in things like electrolytes. And it's because it's not that simple. You know, the human body is very complex. So when you ask, can things go wrong? Absolutely. You know, I've worked in hospitals, ICUs, and even there with all the monitoring, labs every hour, IV electrolytes, specific doses, all of these things, it can still be kind of hard because the human body is very complex. You know, you might add in sodium, you're chasing potassium, add in calcium, now you're chasing phosphorus it's this whole kind of exorbitant thing that we just have to be very careful when we're doing it at home we follow all the safety studies they use the pure water documented cases of things going wrong or when people tend to deviate from that they're adding modalities like electrolytes they're avoiding water things like dry fasting that we absolutely do not do and if we start to do these things we're really just winging it we're not doing evidence-based medicine fasting protocols are there because they are evidence-based for safety so you know fasting is alternative enough we don't need to go rogue we don't need to push the boundaries we're going to follow the body work with the body and not against it the other part um, and you touched on this and i want to kind of add on to the importance of what you do after the fast. So, and there's two major areas there. The first one is that something like refeeding syndrome is very real. Anyone, any doctor that's working in a hospital is familiar with refeeding syndrome. And, you know, again, the protocols we use minimize this to happen, but that is a potentially fatal shift in your fluid and electrolytes that can occur when you start eating again after a fast. So again, very specific protocols that we follow to ensure this from happening. And overall, the number one thing is what you do after the fast and that transition to the health promoting diet. Fasting is great, but it's not going to cure everything. And you can't simply return to your unhealthy diet and lifestyle and expect to continue to have those benefits. So I would say they are all the things that can go wrong with fasting. I can get definitely delve deeper into things like refeeding syndrome, et cetera. But I would say on a very broad scale, that's the things I would want to be very mindful of. Not doing it supervised, adding in or kind of making up things that you think sound like a good idea and not having a good protocol immediately after the fast and long term after the fast. Correct. Well, typically, how long do most people fast? I think it really depends on the person. And Dr. Gershwood, you can add in too. But I would say it really depends on how the body's going. Most of the time, you need to make sure that you've adapted to the ketogenic state to uh, reap the benefits of fasting. So for the average person, that takes somewhere between 48 to 72 hours. So doing a fast less than three days for the therapeutic benefit of fasting is probably not as worthwhile as, say, doing something at least three to five days. And then certain individuals are going as far as 25, 30 days. The average human 
depending on their reserves, depending on where they're starting, can go for up to 30 days. But of course, that's an assessment on an individual basis on how that person is going. Someone comes in and they're 400 pounds, they may be able to go a little longer than say, you know, someone coming in at 115 pounds. So kind of just depends on the individual. The goal, of course, though, like I said before, a lot of people are very tied to these numbers. Like I want to do a this many day fast, but really the goal is to do the shortest fast possible that gets the therapeutic benefits you're looking for. And, you know, it's, it's short enough to, sorry, long enough to achieve that and short enough to not cause any harm. That's your perfect fast line. Dr. Thomas is spot on. And this is, this is we're, we're seeing this day in, day out. And, you know, when, when I'm talking to people, uh, before people actually embark on a fast at home, I, I talk to them, talk to everybody, do a complimentary consult to find out what they're dealing with and what their goals are and whether or not it's a good idea to do a fast, whether their home situation is actually conducive to doing a safe home fast. But, but as far as what they're, what's going on in their health, uh, something you want to keep in mind is the, the more chronic a problem is typically the longer the fast may be required to resolve the issue, or at least, at least, uh, get some benefit from the symptoms. You know, if someone's just trying to get a reset, maybe a week of fasting may be enough to break the cycle, cause your, your memory to fade a little bit with the, with the junk foods and the cravings and whatnot, get your taste buds nice and sensitive. So you can get back on track, just catch up on a little bit of sleep and just, just kind of do a little vacation uh, for your body. If, for example, we've got someone who has you know, uh, high blood pressure, they were on medications, they did a consult, Dr. Thomas, and Dr. Thomas helped wean them off the medications or taper, taper down medications, and but they still have you know high blood pressure, maybe not high enough to justify medications, but still high blood pressure. Chances are they could they could they may need a longer fast, maybe two three weeks. It really just depends on their reserves, and 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 we're going to be following up with them weekly, uh, blood work wise. Uh, we're checking in daily, but we're following up with blood work weekly to make sure that their kidneys, electrolytes, all those blood tests are looking normal. And other uh, recently, I've, I've, we've seen a couple of people with PCOS as well, and sometimes things like fibroids and cysts they they require a longer fast as well. To to we've seen that they do a longer fast. We do a post scan with their their local doctor, and then we can see that they actually reduce. So, and I'm sure Dr. Thomas. Uh, she knows quite a bit about PCOS and, and those types of issues. So I'll turn it over to her. Yeah, we were thinking about kind of touching on PCOS, as we know you do a lot with women's health. And it just, it honestly, PCOS has become so, uh, such a common thing that we're seeing because it typically doesn't respond all that well to normal treatment because they're lacking the key components of nutrition. At the moment, PCOS is up to 10% of reproductive age women, which is huge. And the impact on the quality of life is huge. It doesn't just for, affect your fertility. It's affecting you on a day-to-day, month-to-month basis. They're struggling with so many different things. So we thought it might be kind of helpful to kind of touch on that because we're seeing really good results from people not only changing their diet and also engaging in the fasting. So brief overview for PCOS, two of the three criteria, irregular menstruation or annual ovulation, elevated androgen. So your testosterone, androgens, DHEA, DHEA sulfate, and then symptoms of that, you know, often dark hair on the face, chest, back, oily skin, acne, breast atrophy, excessive muscle hair loss, all of these kinds of things that women, again, they're dealing with that on a day-to-day basis. And then the polycystic ovaries on imaging. So you have to meet two of the three criteria. So there are misdiagnoses and things like that, but making sure that that is the criteria. Most people don't come in and know that they have that, but they often have suspicions that, you know, the internet is a wonderful resource these days, or they're having symptoms that are concerning that they want to be checked out. And the important thing to understand with PCOS and why it makes a difference in terms of what we're eating and not is because insulin resistance is so intrinsically tied to PCOS. So the glucose levels are not responding to insulin, their body's making more insulin, and then they start to become very prone to gaining weight. The link between testosterone and insulin is extremely close together. So they're getting more androgens, more insulin, and more struggles overall. So really helping with the the plant-based nutrition, a low-fat plant-based diet is extremely anti-inflammatory, and it makes your body more sensitive to insulin. The more sensitive you are to insulin, that insulin insulin resistance starts to reverse, the hormone balance starts to come in and everything starts to look a little better. And we've seen some amazing, amazing improvements with PCOS 
in terms of clinical, great, we see your bloods go down and your ovaries look better. But more importantly, the acne starts to clear, you know, the, the oily skin, the hair starts to grow back, the menstrual period starts to be, you know, much more regular and much more pleasant than some of the really painful periods they're going through. And for a lot of women, that outcome actually is that they're able to fall pregnant and being able to see someone have that gift of life that they're that they've been trying. I one of my last patients I saw when I was still doing primary care had been trying for seven years to fall pregnant. And it was actually the last baby I delivered before I left clinical practice doing that. And it was just so amazing because we'd been working together for so long to overcome the PCOS. And then that was her goal. And I know that pregnancy isn't everyone's goal, but it's a common reason people come in with PCOS. And so that has to be for me, one of the most, um, it's just like a career highlight when you actually see that happen just because of the joy and their quality of life difference from going from struggling with all these things to having what, exactly what they wanted is a really fun part of medicine. Oh my gosh. Right. When you can see somebody actually heal that to me mm-hmm. is just, it's one of the best. It is absolutely hundred percent. One of the best. So exactly. just to see that, you know, and that's some of the things that's one of the mainstays of our program, the pregnancy advantage is we're mm-hmm. trying to women get women to get their bodies healthy, you know, especially before pregnancy, before you want to start mm-hmm. conceiving to get you healthy, because they don't call it labor for nothing, just saying. <laughs> kids, <laughs> Been there, done that, you know. So yeah, yeah no, I, I get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also for women who are dealing with health issues. So it is, it's a big one. It is a big one. Mm -hmm. And the fasting can help heal that process a lot faster, especially because women are waiting later to have their, to start their families. And so they're coming into what I call geriatric pregnancies. Like at 35, you're having a geriatric pregnancy. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) That is. So yeah, exactly. You're totally right. And like the the fasting can just help with, you know, kind of a a kickstart, if you will. I mean, I don't like things that seem like a crash diet or anything. It's definitely not in that regard, but the real, the real driving force, like I said, is insulin resistance. And when you're not eating your insulin levels plummet. So automatically that reset in your hormonal imbalance happens within just a few days of fasting that whole process gets started. Yes, it happens while you're eating a health promoting diet, but if you really wanted to kickstart it, fasting is going to make a huge difference for something like that in the beginning. 100%. 100%. Well, what changes can you see in your health? Okay, we said talked about PCS, but just in general, we back up the camera and look at fasting as what it actually conceptually is going on in your body. And I like to imagine it. I, I read this somewhere. It's just a, such a great example where imagine if you're in a factory, okay, and you're, you're, you've got all these workers, they're working tirelessly day in, day out, and they're processing orders in the factory. And just by processing the orders, you're going to have some gunk. You know, the, the machines are going to get a little bit clogged. There's going to be some debris going on. There's going to be some extra stuff that's being created as a result of processing the orders. And then, the boss comes in and says, okay, we're not processing orders for a bit of time. And so everyone now sits quiet and says, okay, well, what are we going to do instead? And the doctor says, well, now uh, the, the boss says, now we're going to actually clean the machines. Okay. And so this is how I look at fasting is that, that most of the diseases that fasting will, will benefit are going to be diseases of dietary excess. Now, if we look at say other diseases that say maybe genetic things, other things, there, there isn't, you know, there's rarely going to be an individual who's not also eating a diet that's, that's, uh, that's fairly rich in processed food. So even if they do have some rare condition, chances are they could be, they, they could have some benefit from removing the unhealthy foods and the processed foods. So the changes we see in our health could be things like, like Dr. Thomas talked about reduced insulin resistance, blood pressure typically goes down and stays down after the fast, as long as we stick to the, to the healthy health promoting diet. Cravings will typically reduce uh, in the beginning of the refeed. And then, you know, as you continue on the diet, they, they typically stabilize as well. Weight loss, even though fasting really isn't used as, we, we don't like to use fasting as a quick fix for weight loss. The, the goal of weight loss is to enjoy the foods that you're supposed to eat to lose weight. And so that's where fasting can really benefit is we do help, you know, coach people and, and walk people through understanding terms like calorie density and understanding, you know, the different types of foods that are out there and the different traps that we can fall into Uh, So fasting is a great facilitator of that. 
There's also the benefits of improving your parasympathetic tone, which is kind of the, the stress response, the, the better stress response that we're looking for. So there's a number of different benefits. And then when it comes to, to the more theoretical biochemical markers, like reducing tumor factors, uh, growth factors, things like that, uh, that have been shown in, in some, some non-human animal studies, then we get, sometimes people are looking for, for fasting as a benefit to either prevent some of their, their cancer growths, or if they have it, they're trying to improve their chances, or, or maybe in some cases uh, they're doing chemotherapy and trying to improve their, their, uh, their success there. So there's been a little bit of data for non-human animals where that may be the case as well. And so, so there's a, a number of benefits, but when we look at fasting, we think of uh, not just like fasting is the medication for the disease. It's more that your body's the, the one that's doing all the healing. Fasting is just a way to facilitate that. Eating a healthy diet is also a way to facilitate that. But we find that with fasting, you can do both. You can facilitate it and, and uh, reverse some of the changes just a little bit quicker. And then for people who are struggling to eat the diet, you can help actually get back on track with the diet. The main idea here is is The Pleasure Trap. Uh, it's a book written by my mentors, Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer. And it really is the, the force that's undermining people's health and happiness as the subtitle of the book is. What we're seeking to do is help people escape the pleasure trap. And that will allow people to live a healthier, happier life back on track with a bit of pride because it's very difficult to eat healthy or to live healthy in an unhealthy world. And I do, I believe, and I, we see this all the time that, that fasting is the way to, to, uh, to help people get back on track. hundred percent. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It is a great reset. And then jumping into the, the great foods that, I mean, I eat more of an abundance of things before I went plant-based. I mean, before it used to be like, you know, meatloaf Monday, taco Tuesday. And you know, <laughs> now like the variety just seems endless of, of what I eat. People think like, you know, so what do you eat? Like, you know, grass clippings, tree bark. Mm -hmm. No, I, I save that for special occasions, <laughs> you know, but they think that it's pretty much, I just eat salads and it's like, yeah, no. Not, not even remotely. It's hard close. to only eat salads if, if that's, you know, if you're going to be plant-based. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is all part of, I joke in that we try to brainwash people when they're, they're doing their fast is where I'm talking to everybody every day. And, uh, and every day they're also getting some information, some, some little videos, some articles that I've written blogs, things like that, just to keep top of mind. And a lot of times people will already know a lot of this information. So, so it's not, it's not, not nothing new, uh, but sometimes we, we, uh, people who are interested in fasting may not necessarily be knowing too much about the plant-based or, or just the dietary, uh, choices that really affect their health. And so it's a good opportunity uh, to get that through so that they can sustain longer term benefits. And again, people don't have to necessarily be perfect afterwards, but, but fasting, I believe sets people up so that they can have the best chance of success. hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, is there a health situation where you wouldn't recommend fasting? Yes. One of the main contraindications to fasting is going to be fear of fasting. So, but however, let's assume that we get over that hump and enough information is given and, and, and maybe people read about or hear about fasting and they're not necessarily nervous about fasting, but let's just take a random person, you know, who's going to be, you know, standard, typical, say American or standard Western, Western diet eating person is they're going to be on medications. Okay. They may likely be on medications for diabetes, for high blood pressure, uh, for autoimmune diseases could be something like prednisone or other, other types of diseases. And so this is where we want to be very careful doing any type of water only fasting. Maybe we do a modified fast like juice fasting, but where they would, where actually we deal with this is, is I send them straight to Dr. Renee Thomas, because Dr. Renee Thomas is a very qualified med medical doctor who, you know, depending on the state you're in can actually look, uh, and, and she can give advice anywhere, but, but as far as calling in a prescription, that's going to be a little bit different. So Do Dr. Renee Thomas will be, you know, she's the medical director of fasting escape and, and the, besides actually seeing people for just normal consults, uh, advice and, and medical consults. Uh, she'll also see people who are looking to do a water fast, but maybe on medications and maybe their doctor isn't that supportive of, of weaning them off medications in, uh, you know, to start a fast. So that's, those are going to be the, the two major ones. Um, there's other situations like type one diabetes or someone having severe chronic kidney disease. Uh, there's a couple of others. In fact, uh, you know, one of, one of the other ones is going to be a medium chain acetyl-CoA dehydrogenase deficiency. That's just a fancy term for it's an enzyme that allows people to get into ketosis. 
And one out of 10,000 people have a, a genetic defect where they can't actually do that. And so we usually can spot that a couple of days into the fast where they're not doing so well and, and they don't have ketones in the urine. And all of a sudden now we know uh, that they've got that deficiency, but there's a number of health situations that we don't necessarily recommend water only fasting with. And so this is why we do the complimentary consult ahead of time so that we can make sure that, that it's a good situation. It's worth it to plan out something like a water only fast. We can do it relatively quickly, but it's worth it to plan out because what we don't want, you know, every so often I'll get someone who calls me and said, okay, I'm fasting today. What do I do? And uh, we haven't really, uh, we haven't really done the, the necessary steps, like get blood work done, talk to them, make sure they're a good candidate for fasting, make sure their home is set up for a healthy fast uh, at home and, you know, make sure we got everything prepared for that. So, but yeah, the major thing that's going to be relevant, I think to people watching is if you happen to be on any medications, including maybe, maybe some hormones from, from something that your doctor ordered or, or maybe trying to manage Dr. Thomas is a good person to talk to so that they can wean those off before or adjust them before they do a fast. Because sometimes you can do fasting with certain medications like thyroid medication, for example, or others, but you'd want to get the medical consult first. You guys know what to look for. You know what's going to work, what's not going to work. So that's where it is so important to be doing this under medical supervision. 100% agreed without question. Well, it kind of, to you know, like to the average person out there, it's going to be like, it's counterintuitive like <laughs> to deprive your body Absolutely. of fuel for a long period of time. Like, um, how am I going to live? Where am I going to get my protein? You know? <laughs> How does the body handle this? Really, a healthy human is pretty well adaptable to periods of fasting. And I, when I say healthy human, I do include the average American. I mean, as long as provided nothing seriously wrong with you, most people can fast for a certain amount of time. Like we said before, depending on the reserves and where they're starting and things like that. But to understand how the body responds you kind of go through stages of fasting, right? So in the beginning, which actually happens within four to eight hours of eating. So everyone does this first stage on a day-to-day -day basis, unless you're eating throughout the night. And that's just where you utilize your glucose, your amino acids, and your fatty acids that you're taking in through your foods. And so that's the first step. Once they're used, which is about 24 to 48 hours or so, your body's going to utilize all the glycogen that you've stored in your liver. And then it switches from glyconeogenesis or making more glycogen to gluconeogenesis, where it starts to make glucose. And then you start to switch into ketogenesis. And that's where your fatty acids are coming from your fat tissue and they'll be used as ketone bodies. So like I said in the beginning, it takes about 48 to 72 hours for the individual to get into a ketogenic state. And that's when all your liver glycogen has been depleted. So that process though, interestingly, tends to spare lean tissue breakdown. And so that's why we don't have to fear, you know, am I going to lose all my muscle mass? Where do I get my protein? Because it actually sparing your lean tissue and what's called essential tissue and you're breaking down your non-essential tissue. That's why you're fasting and you're not starving. Once you deplete all your nutrient reserves, now you're starving. And so that's what we're always avoiding with fasting. So that breakdown and recycling of damaged non-essential tissue in the body starts to provide your amino acids, your fatty acids, and your minerals. The brain is a little different though. Unlike most of the tissues in the body, they can use fatty acids for energy. They're fine. The brain's a little fussy and it uses the ketone bodies beta hydroxybutyrate acetoacetate, and then it actually does require glucose. And the body makes about 80 grams of glucose per day, even on pure water. Pretty much all of that's going to go to your brain. So that's kind of the main way that your body adapts overall to be able to handle the fast. And that's why the longer you go into it, the more and more supervision you need, the more things we're looking for and the more that we're making sure that it's safe because your body is just slowly kind of using up your reserves, which like I said, there's quite a lot of them. So fast, short-term fasting is definitely safe, especially supervised, and it gets more and more complex as we delve into it. So that's the main way that your body's going to adapt. But the, the question being is it seems counterintuitive. Why does it work, right? So the major benefit is the refocus of energy. So digestion takes up a lot of our energy. We always recommend that people are in a state of complete rest or as close to that as possible. So your exercise energy, your mental energy you were using when you were working, cooking, shopping, all the day-to-day -day things, you can just send that all to healing and you can rest and you can start to recover. Very similar to what Dr. Gershwell said, it's almost like a deep clean and reset of the body. So we see things like increased autophagy or breakdown of any abnormal cells in the body. Your immune system actually resets itself and improves. 
you get a lot of gut lining repair, inc increased DNA repair, and a lot of those kind of benefits. You're sort of getting rid of the, the junk and starting to improve what you have. It's like sort of like re re uh, resetting, especially the immune system. It basically like kills off half of it and then like creates better, a better, stronger team or better, stronger immune army, if you will. There's some suppression of certain things, like I mentioned before, that decrease in insulin. There's a decrease in insulin like growth factor one. This can kind of set off your chain. You have P13K, AKT, mTOR. These are all the sort of things that are going towards growth, which can also promote tumor growth. So one of those at least theoretical benefits is that you're stopping a lot of excess growth and resetting the body again decreased reactive oxygen species and therefore decreased inflammation, hormone modulation we see. We see a lot of increased stress resistance. So your body starts to function better against stress, um, breakdown of body fat, of course, and just overall health improvement. So the body adapts really well. Some of the adaptations are to keep you functioning and working well. Other of the ad adaptations are actually going towards healing. So there's kind of a one, your body's going to be fine. And two, your body's probably even going to be better provided it's all done in that really safe environment. And you can clearly see why you need to be doing this under the supervision of a doctor. You, there's just so much going on under the hood that you have no clue about. Most of us are not Absolutely. trained in any of this. And for us, it's like, you know, we're like on this path that we, we don't know where we're going. And like, you guys are kind of like leading us along and in doing that. So I, when I saw your new program roll out, Nathan, I was so excited about this because I thought this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. So tell us about your new program and how does it work? Fasting Escape is, it's a doctor supervised remote fasting program. So we help people go through a fast safely from the comfort of their home. And maybe if a home is not conducive to, to doing a fast, then sometimes people will, will book an Airbnb or some sort of vacation rental with a kitchen so they can refeed. True North is, is such a good place. There's so many benefits people can see from fasting. This is where I learned from my mentor, Dr. Alan Goldheimer, and they are so good at what they do that they're booked, you know, six months ahead of time. And so very often people will, will need to come and do a fast, but they, they, they can't wait because they have high blood pressure. They have type two diabetes. They might like Dr. Thomas was saying, they might, they might have some serious health issues would say like a PCOS or something like that. And they don't want to wait six months. They don't want to have to do that. And so, so, uh, and the same thing was going on with fasting escape. I mean, I only had four beds, so I, you know, I was getting patients and I would be booked two, three, four, five months ahead of time, particularly during the busy months when people were wanting to, you know, they were on vacation, they wanted to get, they wanted to take care of their problem as soon as possible. And so with the challenges of the pandemic, I had a couple of patients who said, well, you know, I can't really travel. My, my spouse doesn't want me to travel. I'm a little bit nervous with all the stuff going on. And, and I also had other people call me that say they were, they were stuck in their own country, whereas otherwise they would have no problem getting a flight out to California, but because of travel restrictions, they weren't able to. So we very carefully started doing this from the comfort of their home and people were responding really well to it. In particular, a lot of people were telling me that they love that they get the hands-on practice afterwards as I walk mm -hmm. them through a proper refeed period. And so this was really useful to me because uh, what I, what I really, I mean, I enjoy walking people through a fasting process, but what I really want is to help people long-term so that they're actually getting, uh, they're, they're actually doing a good job afterwards and they're having a good chance of success. So we walk them through that part of it. And so, so this is, this is where we're, what we're trying to do with the fasting escape. We're trying to help people do a fast safely. Now you did mention earlier that that uh, people should absolutely not do this without a doctor's supervision. And, and what I'll say is that, you know, fasting is essentially safe. We know that the research from the True North Health Foundation shows that, that as long as someone is not, is not very sick and, and very, you know, up there in their years, uh, they can do a safe fast. The problem is, is that many times the symptoms that you feel when you're fasting, we don't know if they're actually good or bad, unless we're actually taking the correct data leading up to those symptoms. And so what we, really what people are doing with, they're doing a fast at home is they're just calling upon um, our experience uh, doing this and then, and then kind of consulting with us and doing the fast and, and we walk them through every piece of the puzzle. And then, as I said before, a major piece for people is they want to fast because they're sick and tired of being on their medications. And they really just need a medical doctor who's supportive that can actually help get them off the medications as needed and guide them through the appropriate diet. Maybe there's a few things they need to fine tune in order uh, for their blood pressure medication to finally start getting tapered off and their, and their blood pressure starting to lower and then therefore triggering the, 
the uh, blood pressure to get to get reduced. And so this is, you know, Dr. Thomas and I work together in, you know, whether it's complex, like I send all the complicated complex cases, to Dr. Thomas, because she's really good at them. Um, okay. And, and the, the people who are off medications, they can start fasting pretty quickly. And we just walk them through the process, but I'm kind of getting sidetracked because I'm, I'm trying to extol the virtues of Dr. Thomas, because she's really great at what she does. And she's, she's been a huge help even when I was running the fasting clinic at the actual physical location, because every so often patients would walk in and maybe they didn't actually tell me that they were on some serious medications. They just failed to mention it in their health history. And when we talked and they say, Oh, by the way, I, I was taking this. I just didn't want to tell you on the phone. Cause I didn't want you to reject me. So now we have to pivot a little bit and, and say, okay, well, we have to, we, we have to do a safe program here. And so I would call Dr. Thomas and we'd consult and every so often I'd send them to her, to her virtually which is great. Now she can do consults from, from the comfort of your own home as well in all the States. But as far as like full on medical, you know, management, it's gotta be in the state she's licensed in, but, but I would have patients walk in and I'd consult with her and she was a lifesaver. She would just walk me through certain situations and we'd get in touch with either their medical doctor or have her, her, her consult with them. And we've had a lot of great cases with this. And so now Dr. Thomas, I'm lucky to have Dr. Thomas as our medical director where she can see all the complicated cases. But if you have all the easy ones as well, it, it, even if someone doesn't need to see their medical doctor or their medical doctor is supportive, then they can do a fast if their doctor comes them off medications or if they're already off, then we can do a fast. But, but the whole idea is this, this new program really isn't that new, okay? So uh, we're kind of standing on the shoulders of our elders, having learned a lot of really wonderful information and trained in a really fantastic place to learn fasting. This is just one way to do fasting that we're trying to do it safely and try to try to adapt to the times as well to, you know, for, for people who may not necessarily want to travel or might not be able to, or you can't, know, yeah. They yeah, can't travel, you know, yeah. for, for whatever reason, you know, I'm just thinking of, you know, uh, people that like I, one of my good friends, Judy Harf went to true North with her husband and he had a severe autoimmune disease and it was having an impact on him being able to get out there, but she, she got him out there. But I'm just mm -hmm. thinking like if somebody's in a situation where they can't, you know, physically get on an airplane and get to you, you know, this is just a, a wonderful way to be able to do this. And kudos to you for thinking about this, especially also too, like airline transportation is becoming, you know, not as dependable, you know, you might not get a flight or go back and, and just the stress alone of that is huge. So this is just, it to me it's just win-win on so many different levels so what is the point of doing the blood work i mean like specifically what are you looking for yeah um there's a lot of things that we're looking for but to kind of focus on your main thing the number one thing we're looking for is is there any contraindication to continue fasting right it's a safety protocol we're looking at what are your electrolytes doing what does your kidney function look like? What does your liver function look like? You know, is there signs of distress in the body? What's your fluid status? Things that are really important to know. Data is key for everything in medicine, right? The more you know, the more you know. And so it's just another tool. It's not the only thing. If someone has normal blood work, it doesn't necessarily mean they can continue fasting. Or if they have abnormal blood work, doesn't always mean that they have to stop fasting. It's just another tool, another piece of information that we incorporate into everything else with the rest of the daily monitoring that Dr. Gershaw is doing is calling every single day. But now we have an additional tool to figure out what's actually going on. And sometimes, especially with being at home, and fortunately, this hasn't been the case, but we can actually tell if you are actually fasting from your blood work as well. And that's an important thing. Because a lot of people think, well, if they're at home, are they just going to cheat on their diet or cheat on their fast or whatever? But we can actually tell from your blood work if you're fasting or not as well. So but that hasn't really been the case. Actually, I think what we found, and Dr. Gershaw can definitely back me up on this, is people actually have done better at home than probably expected. And part of that goes down to having to learn and adapt in your home environment. I mean, it's wonderful to be able to go to a safe space. And for some people, that's what they need. They have to get away from their normal life. But at some point, you have to return back. And I know that a lot of, you know, when we were in person, when the places are in person, you're giving all that education so they can go home. But there's a real difference between learning and actually having to do it that I think has been, uh, at least for me, it was a surprising success of doing the at-home fasting was having to adapt to your home environment. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. And, and I call it your wellness center. 
You have <laughs> like to that. make that's awesome. Yeah, you have to make your home your wellness center. You know, and that's one of the things that I teach about in the program, the Plant Based Academy, is you have to make that. I can go downstairs and eat anything in my house, anything, because mm-hmm. it's not going to hurt me because I've cleaned out. There's no processed crap. There's, you know, there's all the garbage, all, no animal products. So I can feel I have the freedom to be able to go down and eat anything that I want. Now, <laughs> that being said, there's some things that are higher caloric density, you know, <laughs> that are not going to be as good for me. So, mm-hmm. you know, that is part of the, this journey as well. So, yeah. That's a really good point. Making your own health yeah. and wellness center. That's uh, I, 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 I really like that because really at the heart of, uh, you know, our philosophy, my philosophy of, of helping people get healthy is, is encouraging them to become self-reliant. And, mm-hmm. and so we we now live in an unhealthy world where essentially there's so few people that are going to be focusing on their health that, that it's rare to have friends around you that are also supportive of this. And so you know, maybe someday it'll be different, but, you know, let's assume it's going to be like it is now. Whereas, you know, the people that you meet uh, through these programs or the the people that you watch these interviews, it's rare you're going to meet these people in person. And so you're essentially, unfortunately on your own. Okay. When you're back at home or when you're at home trying to eat a healthy lifestyle. And so we really want to encourage people to taking, taking that type of responsibility and becoming self-reliant and knowing what needs to be done when they, if they get off track, relapse is part of recovery. I mean, this is all, you know, there's no judgment here for people who might get off plan and, and need to get back on track. This is, this is what we, we help people do. And so it's useful to know and, and kind of say, okay, now I know what I need to do. If I get back on track, I got to restart in this way. So I really like that your own personal wellness center. Right. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's amazing. I, I often joke that like, I feel like I've done my job as a doctor when you don't need to see me anymore. But that's kind of the point, right? I mean, unfortunately, in this world, there's an abundance of patients. Like, I hear people say about, you know, kind of the controversy of the doctors that you want people to stay sick. So you have patients forever. Like, I have no fear of having patients. And if I can get someone that doesn't need their doctor anymore, like, that's incredible. Oh, come see me every five years. Tell me how great you're doing. Like, that's awesome. But realistically, that's the goal, right? It's becoming the person is become healthy enough and also become more knowledgeable and educated about what keeps them well, that they don't need you anymore. And that's amazing. That to me is true success. I don't want someone having to see me every week because they're so sick. I'm happy to if you need me. But that's not the goal. And I think that that's really wonderful, making your your home, your wellness center and all of those things. That's that's really awesome. I well, think the they, world's getting a little better, though. I mean, I, I mentioned to you, I, I was raised plant based. And so and it took me I think I was 21 when I met the, the my first person that wasn't related to me that followed a plant based diet, whereas now everyone knows someone following a plant based diet The the um the stores have lots of uh options some of them more healthy than others but it is a lot more abundant and people actually know what you're saying if you say hey can i have a plant-based meal or a vegan meal people actually know what you're asking i know when i was younger i would ask hey do you have a vegan meal they're like oh we have grilled fish i'm like we're kind of on a different uh different kind of platform right now so i think things are better that the knowledge is out there you know the internet has connected a lot of people too just like today so i think i think that things are getting getting better i'm always optimistic but maybe the truth lays somewhere in the middle of what we're both saying no it's true and plus you just need that support you're right because if you, you're going to have questions you're going to have questions and that's why that's why I created the plant based academy is because mm-hmm. you're going to have questions whether you are just starting this process or you're down the road you're still going to have questions i still go to the doctor i do my blood work several times a year just to check under the hood you know to make sure everything's kosher and and we're good so you know it, i still do that but i i'm not on the medical treadmill I am not, you know, Mm -hmm. I hardly ever get sick. And if I do, it's like maybe a day or something that I, you know, feel a little low and I day in bed and I'm like, yeah, next day I'm good. And, but the energy is just phenomenal, but to get to this stage, you're going to have questions and you're going to need that support. And that's what I do is I provide that support and that education that you're going to need. What kind of pots and pans am I going to need? What kind Mm -hmm. of, you know, just all the little details on day to day. Yeah. And just the, how do I get into this? It's getting into a routine and starting. Where do I start? And I compare myself to, uh, you know, like you've seen the Wizard of Oz, right? That movie, right? Mm -hmm. Here, here you are, you're Dorothy, you've got the ruby slippers on, you just killed the witch, 
You got all these. Am I having like an acid flashback? Like what's going on here? Okay. I just want to go home. All right. Yeah. We got nothing. There's no GPS coordinates out here. Nothing. Go see Oz. He's got the tech. He can do it. Okay. He can help you get back home. So I'm like, I consider myself to be like on the road going, listen, pst, don't go down there. There's a witch. She's going to be throwing firebombs at you. Number one. <laughs> number two, there's going to be winged monkeys. They're going to pick you up and take you in the wrong direction. And I compare that to like keto or paleo, you know, cause you're going in the wrong direction, dude. <laughs> Whoa. To get your health back. That's not the way to go. <laughs> so, you know, just not going to, don't do that. So I, I consider myself to be like, listen, pst, I got a shortcut. Let's go this way. We'll avoid the fire bombs. We'll avoid the wing monkeys. Let's go this way. And, you know, that's what I kind of think about that program. But Dr. Nathan, awesome. share us with us some of your, one or two of your remarkable cases of fasting and how they transformed. Oh gosh, it's hard to share just one or two because fasting is so effective and it's so, so phenomenal that, that almost everybody gets some sort of benefit if they do the protocol. Right. And so most people that are going to have a significant benefit are people who are suffering from things like high blood pressure, type two diabetes. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll actually see a lot of benefit from that. You know, people on high blood pressure medications, they're not living a really happy life, you know, as they report to me. And this is just from how they report to me. Okay. So side effects of the medications, there's this feeling of unease because they kind of know intuitively that they're at high risk for stroke. I mean, the high blood pressure is the number one risk factor for stroke. Okay. And it's the most preventable. It's, it's also the number one, uh, it's the number one factor for uh, death from anything. Okay. And so, so you, people have this unease because they, they kind of know that maybe not exactly the numbers, you know, but they, but they kind of know that something's not right in their body and that they're going to, they have to take care of their blood pressure. And every time they go to their doctor, uh, what are they trying to do? Breathe, 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 just to bring their blood pressure down temporarily for their doctor. Okay. Not a long-term solution, but they kind of know that they got to do something about it, but sometimes it's hard. There's not really much out there in the medical sphere about how to actually reverse high blood pressure. And if there is for say, like doing a diet, it's kind of just, okay, just do the diet. And then now what? Okay. And so it's, it's very gratifying to see people who have high blood pressure and consistently uh, we watch their blood pressure improve both before the fast as we do the lead in diet and during the fast and then after the fast as well. Okay. And so if they don't have enough time to, to, to do a longer fast to really bring it back down to normal levels, and then we get to watch it after the fast. And as they continue on the, the diet, maybe they, maybe it requires multiple fasts as well, you know, a week at a time or so just based on how their work schedule is. Um, so they don't have to be driving to work or running errands, but high blood pressure is really gratifying to see because you're really affecting the number one cause of death is which heart disease. Type two diabetes is also uh, some remarkable. I had uh, a lady, this was in the inpatient clinic. She came in with an A1C of 14%. And uh, which people who, who have diabetes know that their A1C, the higher it is, the more concerning it is, the more high, the higher your average blood sugar is. And we did, we, she had to come off of her high blood pressure and her diabetes medications with the help of her doctor. And I, uh, you know, called Dr. Thomas a couple of times about this particular person <laughs> uh, and, uh, and it took her about a week and a half to get off the medications, just eating the healthy diet. And then she did, I believe it was a 19 day water fast. And when she emerged from this fast and the refeed period, her blood pressure was normal. She was on off, off her medications and her blood sugar was normal. And then the most important part was three months later, she was at a seven, a 6.9% A1C, which was half of that 14%. But you, uh, you know, the, the, the guidelines for A1C and diabetes is you're, she's still diabetic at that point. I mean, actually just recently, she, she sent me a, a picture uh, that she's her A1C was 5.2%, I believe. And so she's no. completely normal. And, and she has been for the last few years. Uh, that's one of the most remarkable cases I've seen, but, but it, it, people don't have to be that worse, that bad off to actually get some benefit. I've seen people with A1C, the 7%, 6%, 8%, you know, they all come down, uh, because we're not really dealing with, with one particular, you know, threshold. It's that really, we're just normalizing the body's excesses through way of fasting and healthy diet. Autoimmune diseases get a lot of benefit, uh, with fasting as well. Just the reducing the inflammation and reducing that, that process, removing, even just removing the antigens from your gut uh, allows your body to recover a bit. And so it's really nice to see 
things like inflammation, joint pain, uh, these types of things, uh, improve Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you know, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, these types of things. So it's really, really gratifying. So sorry, I can't share one or two because there's just, there's just a whole host of different, different ones that, that come up. I and mean, it's hard to remember every single individual case because they all have some such incredible benefit. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Oh my gosh. And just some of the case studies, you know, that I've seen come out of true North are just mm-hmm. phenomenal, you know, dealing with cancer and just all kinds of things. I mean, I know personally, I've done interviews with, with uh, Judy who her husband had Guillaume Barr mm-hmm. and completely mm-hmm. reversed that hundred mm-hmm. percent, you know, within three or three week fast, he was, he was up and doing yoga, mm-hmm. you know, just yeah. amazing. It's incredible what the body can do. Um, I did yeah. see somebody during the pandemic, we were working with them and, and they were in, uh, they were in Canada cause they couldn't come out and they called me and they said, I got to do a fast. I just found out I had lymphoma and I can't, my, my country won't let me leave <laughs> to come do a fast. And I would come to true North. I would go to fasting state, but I can't leave. So we walked through, this is one of you know the beginning phases of the fasting at home program. And we helped her through a fast and she, sure enough, she, she did very well went back to her doctor, got another scan and her tumors had reduced. And she did this at home, you know, with the help of her doctor in Canada, so she could get blood work and whatnot. But, but that was really, really fun to watch. Uh, and she's incredibly happy about it. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Oh my gosh. No, I just think this is just such a phenomenal resource, a phenomenal tool for people. But Dr. Thomas, you see patients with all kinds of conditions and, and treat them with nutrition, lifestyle, natural medicine, you know, beyond just fasting. And if they need medication, mm-hmm. obviously from the pharmaceutical, you know, it's there as a tool, but mm-hmm. just, just, I just got to make this clear for anybody who's listening. These medications are not going to heal you. Okay. They're going to help you deal with some of the symptoms. That's it. They're not going to heal you. So like my husband has, has MS, but when you go to the MS society, it's te- teaches you how to live with MS. Well, we don't want to live with MS. So he doesn't have any symptoms, you know, of MS. So, you know, they don't teach you that. They don't mention anything about that you can reverse, even though Roy Swank has done a lot of work with that. So, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot that can be done in a holistic way. Share with us one or two of your most remarkable cases and, and how they transformed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I was mentioned, I mean, I trained full spectrum medicine, family medicine, everything from delivering a baby to unfortunately, you know, certifying someone dead, but that's the spectrum, right? You can see of all ages, anything wrong with you. In addition to that, I am a lifestyle medicine intensivist, lifestyle medicine certified, preventive medicine certified, public health certified. I did, I clearly have too much time on my hands, but I have a lot of important things. And the reason I do that is so that I have a lot of modalities to be able to help. So I understand the medication side of it, the typical side of it. I understand the lifestyle part of it, the nutrition side of it, you know, the supplements, the, the this, all the things that come into someone being healthy overall. I try to pull from everything to create that individual plan to be able to help out someone with almost anything that comes through the door. And it's been a joke ever since I was in training, but I attract complicated cases because I don't give up. I love it. And I just want to be able to help people. I want to figure out what that problem is. I never want to say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Of course, I'm not a miracle worker, but I mean, I have that dedication and interest to do that. At the same time, a lot of people coming to me are super educated. They understand a lot about their health. They've really researched a lot of things. And sometimes there's just something tiny that, because you can't always be your own doctor, right? They've overlooked something really small and it's just that little tweak and they're back on their way versus someone needed an entire lifestyle overhaul. So there's so many different things that come through the door. And it's kind of one of the fun things about medicine is you never know what's coming in that day. But I'm kind of on the same page as Dr. Gershfeld. So many things. It's so hard to pick just one. But I mean, I always talk about my dad. He's my number one favorite case study because my dad healed using a plant-based diet. And he did a lot of what I do, which is what I call adjuvant therapy. They're still doing normal things like chemotherapy or whatever the recommended medical is. But there's always so much more we can do. And that's why I like to think of it as adjuvant. It's, you know, in addition to, and that plant-based diet, my dad did fasting. He did juice fasting. He did complete transformation of diet and lifestyle, full plant-based diet. And now he's well. He had extremely aggressive metastatic cancer that was not expected to get well. His chemotherapy was palliative chemotherapy. And now it's over 25 years later and he's doing excellent. He has no cancer, no relapse, nothing. He's not in remission. He is 
cured. And they like to use this word remission, but it's not remission because as long as he doesn't go back to the lifestyle that caused it, he's cured. He's doing wonderful. The cure is obviously staying to the lifestyle, but it's amazing. I had a dad that I wouldn't have had otherwise. And that to me as my number one case study will always be known my number one case study because he's still alive and well. He actually just visited me in the United States a couple of weeks ago. He's completely healthy, no medical problems, nothing. That to me will always be my number one case study, even though he wasn't my patient, but you know what I mean? It's Uh, a miracle. It's a miracle. It's essentially a medical miracle. Like, and we see, you know, Dr. Gershwin and I, and anyone involved in this space, we're very lucky that we see a lot of medical miracles. It's amazing. It's it's amazing what the benefits can be. But I mean, beyond that, as I said, PCOS and pregnancy that um, the patient I mentioned before, she was actually my first patient I ever saw as a resident, brand new doctor, first patient. And she was the last baby I ever delivered. So that was kind of a fun a fun story there. I mean, I've been seeing a lot of things like fatty liver. The number one cause now of liver transplant is actually diet induced, so non alcoholic fatty liver, which is just frightening. And that just comes from severe insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and the foods that we're eating. Thyroid, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, helping those out is a huge quality of life difference. And that's probably a perfect example of where working with a doctor educated in lifestyle is helpful because you can kind of taper off the medications as the lifestyle factors start to work. Same with, I've done quite a lot of post-stroke, people that have, you know, um, residual deficits from their stroke, while they're still going through all the medical management, adding in that diet and nutrition, and they just start to get well, and then we can take them off the medications. Um, PSA, or the prostate numbers kind of drifting up, we can see those drift back down again, which is always really nice to see. I used to see quite a few people with sickle cell when I was in care. Things, a lot of those women's health, interstitial cystitis, sexual discomfort, periods all over the place, migraines, menstrual symptoms, recurrent UTIs, all of that kind of bag we can really work with. Obesity is an obvious one. I've had some people lose some phenomenal amounts of weight and keep it off and do it in a healthy, sustainable, satisfying, normal, normal-ish way. Like nothing extreme, nothing crazy, just a slow progression to losing weight and improving their health acne, asthma, allergies, all of those autoimmune diseases. We've seen uh, things like lupus, um, Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, all of the gut related ones under the umbrella of inflammatory bowel diseases. Then the more simple ones, high blood pressure, a high cholesterol, type two diabetes. Um, a lot of the mood even gets impacted. There's a lot of interesting studies on diet and mood. So anxiety, depression, a lot of those things can start to get better. I don't even know how long you want me to go on for, but there is a lot. I mean, anything you can think of. And the thing is, and I know Dr. Gershwell touched on this before, but essentially what you're doing is you're making your body as healthy and resilient as possible. So even if you come in with one specific thing, and let's say it's MS that you mentioned, right? Awesome. Let's say it doesn't help your MS. What's the last thing you need with MS? Heart disease, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. You don't need any of those things. So if we can prevent or reverse all of that other stuff, even if it doesn't affect your primary problem, which is rare, but let's just say it doesn't play devil's advocate. It doesn't help your primary problem. Well, you've prevented everything else and you've put yourself in the healthiest situation that now you just have that one problem instead of having 20 other problems like the average American starts to accumulate as they go through life. So yeah, I did really bad on picking a case study too. My dad and everyone else falls under my favorite case studies because I love every single individual patient that I've worked with. I enjoy the journey. I love getting to know them. I love helping them. I love seeing them get well. So every single person to me is a valuable person. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. And thank you both of you for this amazing program, because I think it's just going to, it's brilliant what you guys have done. And I think it's going to help a lot, a lot of people. So thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me today and and talk about your passions. Thanks so much for having us on, Jean. Really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so, so, so much. And of course, if any questions or anything come up, we're always happy to kind of address those and answer those and help out. Any, anyone we can help is just such a, such a benefit. Yeah. For people who are looking to book an appointment with Dr. Thomas, she has a website. It's drrenethomas.com. For people looking at the fasting program, it's Fasting Escape. So.